my word, he's so fragile. Dajahal, hi guys, it's Renee and welcome back to my channel and today I'm reacting to episode 4 of Miku at the Blossom. I'm so excited, this show has been so much fun up until this point and it, I do get the sense that we're gonna start treading on more serious territory but I think the balance between serious and playful so far has been great so I have faith in them. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Before we do get into it, I just want to say a quick massive thank you to all my amazing patrons and channel members. If you're interested in joining other of those for uncut and exclusive reactions, links will be in the description below along with my social media and my peer box. And if you want to subscribe, that's always greatly appreciated. Now without further ado, let's get into today's video. The dagger or whatever it was protruding from poor Lord Jung's back like that. Damn. Okay, so the thing that I kind of wanted to touch on, especially here at the end, it started making more and more sense to me because of everything that we'd found out in this episode regarding regarding Jung Hien's father and his situation growing up why he would be so quick to accept the love that Master Jin is willing to give him because it's it's the first time in his life that he's actually getting to experience someone loving him and wanting to be devoted to him and prioritizing him in this way when he's had to do that for everyone else and never gotten when he's had to do that for his father and never got any of it in return. Now obviously familial love and romantic love are two very separate things, but if you don't have the one, it's a lot easier to not just crave, but almost like settle for the first sign of it that you see in the other. Um, and even though I don't think that Master Jin is a, a bad choice in that regard, I think he is quite loyal, even if he is a bit frivolous. Um, and I do think he would treat Lord Jung well to the best of his abilities. I wouldn't have been surprised if someone less kind had shown even half of what Master Jin had shown that he would still go for it because it, he's just been so depraved of it his entire life. He, he, he's just been so deprived of it his entire life um, that I think psychologically it makes a lot of sense. So even though it does feel a bit rushed with the frivolous nature of Master Jin's personality coupled with the need for love, from Lord Jung, it makes perfect sense why they would find themselves like in this very hasty committed relationship, I guess you could say. Like I don't know how to word whatever it is that they just committed themselves to, but it makes sense for both of their personalities to already be where they are in their current dynamic, um, which I actually really appreciate because I'm not the biggest fan of uh, insta love or anything like that but I think they've set it up really well here and they've motivated it well enough that it doesn't feel like it's just there for the heck of it and the fact that we have other things going on as well driving the plot forward and it's not just a romance is making the story so compelling because if it had just been the romance no matter what show it is like you have to do work so much harder at making the story interesting in my opinion if you're just gonna have it be a straight up romance and the fact that we have all these like political machinations and things like that going on as well i'm just living for all of it like this is the kind of historical bl that i have been craving and you know untamed word of honor i love those so much and it's just so nice to see something that I think clearly took some inspiration from those being able to be fully uncensored in this way and I think the actors are doing a great job with it yeah I'm just I'm really intrigued to see where the next episode goes I've been 
enjoying this so much and I kind of just want to be able to binge it even though we can't but hope you guys enjoyed let me know what you thought and otherwise I'll see you in the next one